This is the Phony Box. It is a mobile DIY jukebox using contactless RFID technology. It plays audio files, playlists, podcasts and web streams such as YouTube. It uses an intuitive, open source web application to manage your media on your own Raspberry Pi. In this video, I want to show you how I realized the project so that after watching this video you have all the tools and information you need to build your own Phony Box. So what I want to do first is touch on the hardware which I used and how I built it all together. Then I want to show the Phonybox software which has been specifically tailored for this use case. Finally, I want to wrap it up with some common pitfalls which I encountered. At the heart of the box is a Raspberry Pi 3. I simply hot glued the Pi to the inner side wall of the box. I saw techniques using spacers or wooden constructions in other boxes, which probably look a bit nicer, but this one worked out for me. As main power supply, I went with the power bank. You can go with the one I chose, which is this one from EasyEgg. What is important is that it supports pass-through, which means that it can provide your Pi with power while simultaneously charging. Within the box, I saw these limiters here so that the power bank is kept in its place even when your kid tries throwing the box to the wall. As you can see in my box, I created a slot on the outside of the box, which has the purpose of charging the power bank via USB. For this slot, I first drilled a hole in the piece of plywood I had left over, which was roughly as big as the size of the USB adapter sitting in there. I then scraped the edges out using a rasp. Then I varnished it with the same green color that was applied onto the box. I then inserted the USB adapter into the hole I drilled and filled the gaps with some hot glue. On the other side, for the on-off switch, I followed a similar procedure. But here I drilled two holes in the side of the plywood piece in order to fit the cables of the on-off switch to the sides. The on-off switch connects the power bank to the Pi. This is not the smoothest approach to power on and off. There are many viable options out there, such as this on-off shim from Pimeroni, which lets you gracefully start up and shut down your Pi. The mechanism behind the contactless card reader technology which is being used here is actually way simpler than you may think. There are two main components involved in the transfer, the RFID receiver and the RFID transmitter. In my case, the transmitter is a key card. Nowadays, transmitter chips have gotten so small that you could also attach them to some toy or other object. As soon as the transmitter is in range of the receiver, the receiver just acts as a keyboard. It types in the ID of the card and hits enter. The Phonybox application, which I'm going to show you later, simply connects this ID to a directory or a link and defines what to do. For example, play the song. As a card reader, I tried out two different USB card readers one with 13.56 MHz and one with 125 kHz, which both worked out perfectly for me. I stick with the one with 13.56 MHz simply because I wrecked the other one. The buttons are a bit more tricky. First of all, you will need some soldering equipment. Secondly, you will need the buttons. Here, you will need to look for pushed buttons. The colored ones also give the whole box a more child-friendly vibe. So I definitely recommend these. Thirdly, you need jumper wire cables to connect the GPIO pins from the Raspberry Pi to the buttons. The wiring of the buttons looks as follows. The setup uses the internal resistors of the Pi. In case you experience under voltage, you may consider setting up resistors between the GPIO pins and the buttons. One important thing to mention is that the buttons are not mandatory. You can actually do all the controls with key cards as well if you are looking for a more minimalist approach to the box. The box I used is a simple and cheap $5 wooden box out of the hardware store of your choice. First I grinded the box a bit and then varnished it with green color. Here I used a water-based color which is extra suitable for kids. I also attached locks to the side so that the box cannot be opened by accident. I used these USB speakers from Trust. They can be connected via USB and are quite lightweight. An additional sound card is not necessarily needed, but feel free to use one if you feel the need to. If you use other speakers, then it might make sense to get an external sound card. I drilled a hole of about 50 to 60 millimeters, or 1.96 to 2.36 inches into the box. 
I only had a drill which was the size of 60 millimeters, and there was a tiny little bit of space between the edges of the hole in my speakers. Then I dismantled the speakers, which means cutting off the plastic surroundings. To prevent cracking noises, which sometimes occur in the setup, I additionally attached a ground loop isolator between the audio cable of the speakers and the Raspberry Pi. As my weapon of choice, I then again hot glued the speakers onto these cheap fan grills to get a bit of an industrial look. After setting up all the hardware, you will need to install a fresh operating system on your Pi. I went with Raspbian Lite here. Then you need to set up auto connect to your Wi-Fi and enable SSH so that you don't need to connect the screen to your Pi each time you want to work with it. After setting up the OS, you will go ahead and install the Phonybox software. You can get it from this GitHub site. Just follow the installation details under quick install on the GitHub site. It updates frequently since it has a very active community and the installation process is excellently documented here. You will need to adapt the GPIO button configuration in case you used the button setup I used earlier. At the time I recorded this, this file was under settings and then gpio underscore settings.ini. After setting up the software, make sure your phony box is turned on and then you can go ahead and just type in the IP address of your Pi into the browser as long as you're in the same network as your Pi. This is the central entry point for the box. You can upload files or download YouTube videos to the box from here. You can register cards so that they are linked to the folder of the audio files. It might make sense to set up a static IP address so that you have an identical IP address to connect to in your browser each time you want to register a key card. Since this box was a gift to the son of a friend of mine, I didn't set this up because the box was about to switch networks. One last point is also that my Pi was running in a bit of an undervoltage from time to time. So far I haven't had any bad experiences with it, but if this is an issue for you, you might either use a setup with resistors between the buttons, or make sure you have the right cables installed from your power supply. So thank you for watching, that's it from my side. I wish you good luck and endurance with building and setting up and hope this video helped you out. If you liked the video, please leave a like or subscribe and maybe let me know how your box building went in the comments. Goodbye!